Good evening. Welcome to this session, Basics of C-Sharp Programming. I hope you had the time to go through the last two days lessons. And I also guess you would have used the online compiler to write your programs, compile, and have a hands-on experience with how to uh, write a basic C-Sharp program. And uh, uh, today, we will now move forward to working on the control flow statement, that is how to use a if loop and a for loop and all that. And as it would take a lot of time to work on this, I'm just going to go and start right away with writing the program. You can reserve your questions as we have been doing for the last two days to go forward and ask a question at the end. All right. Now, let me take you to the online compiler where we can go ahead and start our work. And now my screen is visible for all of you. So here is a simple uh, window that's available for us. Let's go and uh, write our program here. Yeah, thank you. So now that I'm going to start our program. Control flow statements, you know that these are the ones that are going to help us to structure a program. All programs are not going to be very simple that we receive an input and output. We need to check for certain conditions. In some places, there are several conditions that we need to check. In some places, we have to check one or two conditions. Whenever we check a condition, what would be the output? The output would be either someone would pass the condition or they will fail the condition. So there are only two ways in which it goes. So this is what we are going to do. And the mechanism by which we are going to do is called control flow statement. We are going to check for a condition. When someone passes the condition, we are going to have a set of activities. When someone fails a condition, we are going to have a set of activities. Well, let's start with a simple if statement here. All right. So how do we go forward with the if statement? Always there is a condition that would be checked by the if statement. Now let's take, for example, I'm doing a, a screening camp, okay? So health care screening camp. Everybody is talking about health, so let's also talk about uh, this. Now, when a candidate comes and registers with us, we are going to check their gender. If they are a male, we are going to send them to X doctor. If they are female, we are going to send them to Y doctor, things like that. So in order to achieve our task, I'm going to declare a string and the string is going to be called gender, right? Obviously, I'm going to receive the input. So I'm just going to go ahead and write console dot write line. Uh, please, uh, specify your uh, gender okay right so now the end user will specify the gender so i'm going to receive that in this and store it here obviously i will use this console dot read line to receive the value and store it here and now it is it now we are going to check so this is where we are going to start our if statement if if the uh, variable gender if the variable gender gender i have declared that as g uppercase so gender is equal to okay it's a string so male okay we have to give instructions that male should be uppercase m and uh, you know all those things i hope you know that so i'm not focusing much on that if the gender is male so what are we going to do i'm going to say console dot right line Please go and consult, uh, consult, consult uh, the uh, general physician. Okay, right. I need not even have an else statement. Okay, it is like there are certain lifts. If the door is closed, it will run. If it is not, it will not throw any warning. You would have seen certain uh, lifts like that, something like that. Always a if statement necessarily need not have a else part of it. So with this itself, it would work. Let's see how does this work. Let me go and click on the execute button. Yeah, so it is asking me to specify the gender. Oops, by somehow I have given here is this value. So this is uh, not going to work. So let me write this one as male. 
and now execute so it's checking if it is made go consult the general physician now let's have an else part so in the else part how do i write obviously if it is a female what is it going to happen and please understand if there is only one single statement to execute you don't have to have a set brace if you have multiple lines to execute you have to have set brace now there is just a single line so i'm not going to use a set brace i'm just going to say console dot right line in the else part if it is a female i'm going to say go consult uh, uh, the um, gynecologist gynecologist okay right so that's going to be the option here now let me go here and let me mark it as female now please look at this i have not written else if something is equal to right away so if you are male you are going to do this else you are going to do this this is how it's what we are going to do now now let me execute now so how will this program now run so it will start from the main it will come here it's going to go display this once you put the value this console dot read line will receive the value and store it in the variable gender now it will come to if it will check if the gender is equal to male but we have given here as female so obviously the condition fails as the condition fails it will just move out of this bunch and go to the else part and in the else part it will go and write it is this one that is the console we kind of call the just yes that is what we get here as a output to right now let's go forward suppose say i also have a transgender and i have to check it so this is where one more condition is coming up so probably i'm going to now have an else if also so now else in the else part if i'm going to say if the gender is equal to female what are we going to do that is where we are going to ask them to consult the gynecologist now i'll have an else part so if you would feel comfortable i will put a set phrase the way it's not mandatory here right and then i'll have a else part and in the else part i say console dot right line i'm not sure and to whom a transgender would go so i'll say uh what's your problem or whom do you want to consult whom do you want to consult i'm just asking them okay so that's kind of i'm figuring it out like this now to execute this program let me call trans. okay so now let me execute it so whom do you want to consult is coming up so what have we learned now we have seen a very simple way of writing a if statement so in a if statement what are the points that we gather here the point number 1 that we gather here is that all the if statements need not have else statement okay and if you want if you have multiple conditions to check multiple conditions to check then you will go for what is called as a else if statement okay so now this is the most interesting part of it we have multiple conditions to check now in the if loop there is one more thing called as nested if i'm going to come to nested if in 10 minutes later i'm going to go with the next activity and then come back to this one so now let me take you through our another activity that i would like to show you Okay, I'll come to nested if in a minute. Now, please look at this. I kind of see all these things, like you know, the television channel packages. How do we choose the television channel package? Now, there is a package A, there is a package B, there is a package C. So, how do we do this kind of an activity? So, if my option is A, only when I choose an option, I will get to know what are the channels that are a part of it. When only when I choose a package, I will know what are the channels that are a part of it. So, to do this, what I'm going to do is again, I'm going to take you to the online editor, and there, let's go ahead and write our program. Uh, right, I am going to put all of these. or if this is difficult i mean let me just
Okay, so now let me start with it. So what are we going to do? We are going to work on a switch case. So in this switch case, we are taking an example of TV channels and packages. So that's what we are going to do now. So to do so, let me just start with this. I'm going to say console dot right line, and I'm going to ask our end user to choose a package. So please um, specify your preference of package. Okay, so, and that we are going to mention it as either, they should mention A, B, or C. Okay, I'm stopping with that, I'm limiting with that. To receive this, let me declare a, a character variable because that's more than sufficient. We haven't used a character so far. So character, the name of the character, I'm going to call it as channel. And now I'm going to go forward and get console.readLine and get the value and store it here. I've made a mistake with the read line and let me get it right read line okay now how do we go forward then we have to start the switch activity what will you switch the variable channel channel is what we will pass it through here now what is it we have to check for case a so case a is uh, it's a character so i have to give it like this so case a is where we say console dot right line so uh, what are all part of it? I kind of uh, put these things in the South Special Children's Club, something, something, something. So I'm going to say package includes South Special mm, Children's uh, Stuff. Uh, oh, okay, okay. And, 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 and uh, something else. Okay, movies. Okay. So this is it. And then I'm going to say console.write line. So what is it? I pass 250 rupees. Okay. And I'm closing it here. And always when you use a switch case, you have to use a break statement. And I'm taking it here. Similarly, I'm just going to copy for the rest so that I can save time on it. I'm going to paste it and I'm going to have uh, the next option is B. If it is B, the package includes, um, I think I had marked uh, sports, news, uh, movies, and uh, regional packages to number. So that's it. And it, it is a bigger package, so it would cost 450 bucks and break. And now comes our, uh, our, our next thing that is the case C. If it is case C, what is it that we have? Package includes, includes, I think I had um, uh, discovery, um, history, and uh, I think I'm stopping it here and it would uh, cost say somewhere around 350. And always when you use a switch case, we go for default. Default is when someone does not choose any of the given options and chooses something outside the option, what will you do? So outside the option when someone chooses, I'm going to say, um, I'm going to say renew membership and it would cost say 150 rupees, right? So our program is ready. Now I need to run. So let's assume my option is the A and run. So how will this program work? So it will read, get the value, switch it to here and find out whether it is matching to this one. So if it matches A, it will come execute, break the loop and walk out of the loop. Supposing my option is C, it will check A is not matching, B is not matching, it will come to C, C is matching, it will execute that set and break the loop and come. So that's how it's, it will work. So I have given the option A. Now let's go forward to check. Ah, right. And this is what I wanted to show you. Now please look at this. Again, the same thing, the string to character conversion. So we been using this read line. We know it is a string and trying to store it in a care is not working. Obviously, we have to use a convert function. Convert dot 
to care of. So it's a care function. And right away, put our thing here. Okay, so let's, let's, let's execute now. Okay, so option A means the package is, uh, you know, you include out special, da, 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 right? So this is how this switch case works. So switch case is something that will be used when you have multiple choices to choose from. So if you are going to work on something where you have multiple choices and you want your end user to choose from that, then you can go for the switch case pattern. Now that the switch case is also easy to understand. Now let me now move on to show you a while loop and then I will go to the nested if. Now let's look at here. I'm going to go for a while loop. How do we write a while loop? Uh, I'm just going to count on uh, the uh, say the uh, number of days that are left in the lockdown. Okay, so I'm going to say int uh, x is equal to zero. While, while, while hmm, x is less than 10, what are we going to do? We are going to say console.write line lockdown continues. So obviously it will do this. So this is how a while loop works. While is where it will check the condition and then execute the activity. So it's like, you know, um, it, there are these uh, 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 washing machines which would run only when the door is closed. Uh, microwave ovens, it will warn you that the door is not closed. Even there are these elevators which says, you know, close the door for you to run. So likewise, we check a condition. So in a while loop, always what we do is first we would check for a condition and then we will repeat the activity. Once the condition is through, you will repeat the activity for X number of times. Whatever number of times that you want, you will repeat the activity. So that's here. So lockdown continues. And now the most important thing, I have to do that X uh, plus plus. So it's going to add it up. Now, finally, I just want to make it simple. So I'm going to say console.write line. Uh, um, there are still um, X number of uh, days left for lockdown. Okay. And what is it? I'm going to have our variable X printed here and the formatting here goes in here. Okay, so we are going to check. So initially when you start, what happens? Uh, X is equal to zero. So zero is less than 10. It will print. It will become one. So it will continue to do this. When X ten X plan equal to 10, it will be less than equal to 10, right? So let me now execute my while loop. Somewhere, somewhere, somewhere I have extra loop. Okay. Okay, so lockdown continues. Still 11 days left for lockdown. So we have somehow returned our program. This is a while loop. What happens in a do while? You will have the do here and while at the end. So if you would want to, I will just replace this here. So a do while works like this. You are doing the activity and then you will check for the condition. Now my question is, why do you have to do something and then check for the condition? Even if it is wrong, it would work is what we have understood. Right? I'm leaving this question. I will answer you through our email. Now I'm leaving this question for thought. In case someone wants to answer, you can also write to us. I will answer you via email. Why or where will we use this to while loop? Now, as it is going interesting, I would need five minutes to explain to you a nested loop. So I'm just going to go ahead and explain to you a nested uh, uh, loop. So let's go there. Okay, I have just taken the case of COVID-19. Uh, this was a quite an interesting chart that I saw. So I'm going to put this in a program. What is it that I'm going to put in a program? How do someone test for a COVID-19? So the first thing they ask you is, do you have a travel history? If yes, 
you go into a separate branch. If no, they say you don't have, there is no, no COVID-19, you're safe, go ahead. So if you're S, the next question is, do you have temperature? If S, then they take you for other things. If no, they just ask you to go and be on your own home quarantine for 28 days. So if you have temperature, the next thing is, do you have coughing or sneezing? And if you say yes, they take you for the test. And if you say no, again, they give you medicine for the fever and uh, they put you in a separate ward for quarantine. I have put the whole thing as it would take a bit of time. I have written the program for you. And I'll now walk you through this program. And I know I may have to share this window, window, window. Oh, oh. COVID.CS. Okay, so we start here. I have declared three variables. One is to ask the travel history. Second is to ask for the temperature. Third is to find out if the person has a cough. What is a nested if? Nested if is where you have multiple conditions and each stage there is an exit point. If you remember the power point that we saw, in each stage there is a going into the next stage and walking out of the stage. So that is what we are going to see here, right? So first question is, I'm using the command prompt to show this because that is where we will easily understand. So do you have a travel history? So you have to answer. Now when the answer comes, we are going to do a console.read line, store it in the variable t history. We are going to check if the t history is equal to s. We are going to ask, okay, you have a travel history, do you have fever? If again, if they say s, we are going to ask, do you have cough and sneezing? If again the answer is S, we are going to put them in an isolation ward. If you have a travel history, you have fever, but you don't have cough, what will we do? We'll treat them for fever and put them under quarantine. You have travel history, but you don't have temperature, what do we do? We put you in a home quarantine. You don't have a travel history, then you're going to be safe, no COVID. All right? So let's now again, I need to share my command window to show you how this works. So I'm gonna do this CSC, COVID, uh, COVID, COVID dot CS. Wow, it works. Now let's take it seriously. Do you have a travel history? Uh, SR, no, first let me just put no, like all of us. Yes, we are safe, none of us have COVID-19, super. Right, let me again go ahead. Do you have a travel history? Let's assume this person has traveled. We yeah, are, do you have fever now? I say yes, now do you have cough and sneezing? Yes, I do, then says isolation ward, undergo COVID-19 test. So this is the nested if that helps us to, um, you know, multiple conditions and you want to check under multiple multiple times and in each of the state there is an exit point for you to walk out. So this is something that is used by a lot of gaming application. Only when you pass level one, you can go to level two. In every level, there is an exit criteria as well. So something very similar to that is what we would put it put under nested if statement. All right? So does it give you a clarity of how we have written? We'll run it one more time to take few S and few one or two no's. So do you have a travel history? I say S. Um, do you have fever? Uh, let me say S. And do you have cough or something? No. So you will be treated for this. So every stage when you have uh, uh, an entry and an exit point. So if you pass that, you will go to the next one. If you fail that, you will exit out of that. So this is a very, very simple way of understanding this. Um, yeah, nested if. I would like to show one more program before we wind up for the day. So let me just go to the compiler. Let's um, uh, declare an array, okay? Uh, Priya, do we have time for that? Are we nearing the end? Or I will take the questions. I would like to take the questions now. I would like to take the questions now.
we have 10 minutes so can i go ahead right um, um yeah i think we have time so i will just go ahead with one more thing on how to uh, write a simple for loop okay so um so for loop is something that you all know so let me just declare an array from where we can start something declaring an array is uh, is my window visible is my window visible for you all Okay, thank you. I'm on the GUI, I'm on the, um, what is it, uh, browser, online compiler. Okay, right, thank you. So with that, let me make it really, really fast. Um, I'm writing one of our very, very favorite programs in Array. Array, you all know, is a collection of data of the same data type. So I'm just going to have a collection of uh, marks. Int marks is equal to, this is how we declare here, int new marks, uh, new marks, marks of. And you have to mention the size inside the square bracket. If you want to provide the list right away here, you don't have to provide the marks. There you can provide the marks like this in here also. In this way also, you can do it. Now, if I want to display them, how do I do it? I just go for a for loop. I say for int i is equal to zero. i is less than... Now I need to get the size, if either some uh, property called length, which could be used, or you can just say i is less than five, you say uh, i plus plus. So now we'll say console dot right line of marks of i. Right, so how does this work? So initially i will be zero. Um, so it, the, it checks zero is less than five. So it will come here to the next line. Console dot right line of marks of zero. So what is in the zeroth position? 98, it will write, I print 98. Then it becomes I plus plus. So it will become one. One is less than five. So it passes the condition. So it will come for marks of one. One, what is there? That is 97. So likewise, it will increment every time and print the value. Now let me check here for printing this. Marks, are you... is equal to new. I'm sorry, I wrote int and I new int of 98, 97, 96, 86, and 78. Uh, please take your time to use a compiler, online compiler, write your program. When we share our uh, programs with you, please try to redo the same thing at least. Uh, I don't want to bother you by giving you some assignment or anything because I know you, won't, you wouldn't be interested in taking up assignments. So please try and practice the same thing that we do because this program, uh, if I had started writing, it would have taken me 12 minutes to write that now. So I wrote it earlier and I kept it for you. So please do write and see, it's so much fun writing it. So enjoy your Sunday. Let's catch up on Monday. Bye, guys.